Universalist Fellowship of Vero Beach, and the pledge will follow. Let us be one in spirit. Dear God, that faithful yet gentle spirit of life and love which breathes so faithfully through this complicated world of ours, be with us this hour as we do our fair city's business. Help us this morning to bring the right tone and tenor to our proceedings. May all who speak and act here this morning be unerringly courteous and kind, treating all persons, counselors, citizens, media, and staff alike with the dignity and respect they deserve. May no one of any standing or station feel in any way dismissed or disrespected. May courtesy be the law of our hearts and the ruler of our tongues. May everyone hold and share their ideas and perspectives modestly and maturely and even with a healthy measure of self-suspicion, even as we seek to truly listen and fully understand the ideas and perspectives of others, even if they are very different from our own. Dear God, help us to make courtesy and kindness the first business of this day. Amen. Thank you. Will you pledge with me? I pledge allegiance to the flag flag of the United States States of America America, and and to the republic Republic for which it stands, stands, one one nation nation under God, God, indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and and justice for all, even politicians. I'll call this meeting to order of the November 5th, uh, 2013, 9.30 a.m. regular city council meeting in the city of Rural Beach. Ms. Vock, would you call the roll? Mr. Winger? Present. Mr. Kramer? Here. Mrs. Turner? Here. Mrs. Carroll? Here. Mayor Fletcher? Here. Are there any agenda additions or deletions? Staff has no changes. Move for approval of the agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Regular city council meetings. Uh, oh, that's a consent agenda. Public comment. Maybe? Public comment. Yes, we do have. Is anyone in the public like to speak to the council at this time? Please come forward. Seeing no one from the public this time, we'll close the public comment. The consent agenda. Move for approval. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Public hearings. This is a quasi-judicial public hearing. Uh, item 3A, an ordinance of the City of Rio Beach, Florida, requesting requested by 703-725-17th Street, LLC, to annex 2.5 acres, more or less, into the city, which property lies south of the city limits along the south side of 17th Street, east of High U.S. Highway 1, pursuant to the voluntary annexation provisions of Section 171.044, Florida Statutes, provided for conflict and serviceability, providing for an effective date, requested by applicant. Is the applicant here this today? Yes. Mr. Shu, good, yes. good morning. Stand you want to open up, Tim? Uh, let's first swear, swear in. Oh, uh, we better swear in. Let me get my, my paper here. We'll set a new press. Disclosure by the City Council of any <laughs> ex parte communications, if any. I have had none. No. Anybody else? Okay, no. 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 Swearing in of applicants. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. If there are any uh, uh, exhibits, the city clerk will hold those exhibits for 30 days until the time for appeal has expired. Staff, would you open your statement? Open your oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of city council. Uh, the ordinance before you is in response to a voluntary annexation application from 703-725-17th Street, LLC, petitioning the city to annex a 2.5-acre property located south side of 17th Street, just east of the intersection of US-1 and 17th Street, as we're depicted on the screen above. The property is occupied by a 20,000-square-foot retail center called the Shops at 17th Street. At the first reading, you were provided an annexation report prepared by the staff, which had been reviewed by the Plain Zoning Board and recommended for approval. Um, at this quasi-judicial hearing in your agenda package, has also provided a supplemental report that documents that we've met all the technical and uh, legal requirements for annexation. As this is a quasi-judicial, those are the points that need to be made. Unless you have any specific questions to me or the applicant, and um, at this time, I would suggest we open for public hearing. Okay, you have no witnesses, no cross No, I have none. <coughs> Applicant, <coughs> President, uh, you have a statement to make for us? <clears throat> you 
Your name and address, please. Uh, good morning, Joseph Schulke, Schulke Bidon Sada, Revere Beach, Florida. And I'm also here with the applicant, Phil Markowitz, representing 703-7225, 17th Street, LLC. Um, we really don't have much to add to it. I just want to uh, let you know we are here to uh, try to answer any questions you may have. We agree with the staff report that first on the Planning Zoning Commission and the supplemental report. We've re reviewed it all. Uh, uh, we concur with it. And, uh, you know, we have nothing further to add at this time. Thank you. Since there are no cross-examination or witnesses, uh, item four would be testimony and presentation of evidence by the public. Is there anyone in the public that would like to speak to this issue? Seeing no one from the public, we'll close the public hearing portion of the program. Closing, closing arguments by applicant. You have none, I assume. Okay, thank you. Staff? We have none. Okay. There is no rebuttal. Discussion by the city council or any uh, discussions, any issues by the city council? No, I'm quite satisfied, and I um, move for approval. Do I have a second? Second. second. Ms. Bach, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Winger? Aye. Mr. Kramer? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Mrs. Carroll? Yes. Mayor Fletcher? Yes. App application is uh, Thank approved you, city council. unanimously. Thank you for your time, Thank sir. Thank you. Resolution for adoption without public hearing. There are none. First reading by title of ordinance. There are none. City clerk's matters. I have none. City manager, do you have any items? Uh, I have nothing but ready to answer any questions that the council may have. Any questions? I do have a question. Uh, Mr. O'Connor, would you give us an update? Um, we've had a number of documents come across our desk, uh, three in fact within the last week, uh, in regard to the old diesel power plant. And I believe there's um, some movement and some concerns as well that are going on with that, um, our long-term lease on the property, and uh, some potential um, interest in that site. Can you just give us a very brief update on what's going on with the diesel power plant? Yes, ma'am. Each of uh, the council members should have received a copy of a tolling agreement that we signed last week. That tolling agreement, what it did is kept uh, either side from declaring a statute of limitations on and preserving our rights to proceed in the process. Since that time, on that same day, November the 1st, uh, we received a notice that there was uh, a suit filed. The city attorney would have to address that better than I, but basically saying that we were in default of the lease and they were taking us to court to sue us over that. They being the holders uh, of the tenants. current lease? Yes, the tenants of the property. Uh, from there, we received uh, a letter yesterday uh, from an interested party to purchase the site. I had talked to that party several times before. I did not encourage a letter. It obviously just was timing more than anything else. But he said that he wanted to put in writing. I did call the individual just to make sure, let him know that we received the letter. And <laughs> the timing was sort of a, a little issue there. But at least it gives and documents that they would be very interested in purchasing that property. They have a, an interest in making it a point of destination through the type of land use that would be there. I've talked to Mr. McGarry. We would probably have to change a couple items in the ordinance. But in general, it shows, and I think it displays to the council and to the public, that there is an interest in that site. Uh, now, as the site is a designated um, historical property, the interest in it is not for just the land value. It, it, it is um, a continuation of the property building there. Is that correct? I'm not sure that they have a real interest in, in it being on the National Registry, but they are interested in the size of the building, and they are interested in the location. You're on Highway 60, so if you're going to have a point of destination. The other thing that interests them, and this couple have visited Vero. As a matter of fact, I think they have property here in Indian River County and come up here pretty frequently and sort of follow our press coverage of stuff. <clears throat> they like that 14th Street and the improvements that are being made along mm -hmm. there. They think that that Through will the be the Arts District. The Arts District. And, the, and they will see that, again, establishing a point of destination. They wouldn't be a lone critter out in the middle of nowhere. So they see that as a value as well. And I think it's a combination of all of that. And they have uh, seen the building. They have not been in the building, to my knowledge. But uh, they understand the structure type and the past uses. They are familiar because I told them about the environmental uh, issues that we have addressed and that the city has uh, done over time. So again, it's a point of interest. I, I think if we put it on the market to sell, you're going to get more than one mm -hmm. uh, offer. 
Uh, also, now to follow up on the litigation, we probably will have to file a counter uh, uh, suit in the fact that they were in delinquent of uh, their uh, lease agreements and terms and conditions with the city. The city attorney's office obviously will be working with uh, Gene O'Neill, who will be the attorney. He specializes in uh, in leases and property rights like that. One additional question, and I'm not sure whether this question should be addressed to Mr. McGarry or to our city attorney, and that is when a property is on the um, Historic National Register, can there be stipulations to the purchase of the property that it must be continued? Or, or if somebody purchased it, would they then be able to just do whatever they wanted to it? It's uh, it's on the National Register, but more importantly, it's on our local register. So they're, they're tied to the historic uh, restrictions on it. Okay. Wonderful. You, right. in, if we decide to sell, which is my recommendation, I think we're not very good landlords, that uh, we could sell the property. You could put in the terms and conditions and uh, the, uh, based on the sale. Now, you need to understand every restriction we put on probably has a cash value to Correct. somebody. So we that would be restricting ourselves. Great. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Mr. Mayor, may I? Sure. Um, Mr. O'Connor noticed a memo that we received from Ms. Larson, from you and Ms. Larson's team and um, Javier Gonzalez regarding the use of credit cards that now available at Leisure Square, uh, hopefully at Riverside Tennis, and in the planning department. I think this is a great move for convenience for our citizens when coming to pay their dues. <laughs> Yes, ma'am, and we are moving forward with Great it, trying step. to make it throughout the organization so we can sort of make it universal as instructed and uh, requested by the city council. So we are moving forward in that area. We're doing it in a very delicate manner in the fact that we we understand the risk tolerance is virtually zero, and if we make a mistake, so we're trying to minimize any possibility of that. So it's a transition. Uh, Wells Fargo, who is our banking provider, is working with us in that effort. I certainly applaud the effort in giving convenience for our citizens and especially yep. for recreation programs for camps and things like that, that people can easily pay for those services. Thank you. Yeah. And how far out are we from accepting those at customer service for utility payments? We're probably a couple of months out from that in the fact that we're trying to make sure that we don't overpay since now we're taking electric utilities and if you expand that use of credit cards beyond that scope, there is a cost for negotiating with that bank right now. Right, and that is a fee that is taken off of the amount of money that's coming in that we may not have budgeted for in the past. Will there then be a service charge that we will add on to the, uh, for instance, a convenience fee for using credit cards to recoup that? So there isn't a loss to the city? Yes, there will. We are looking at the, a similar type of situation that the county imposes. Are we doing that with recreation? The answer is yes. I believe we are doing it now. When we started in uh, uh, in the planning department, we were not charging that fee in order to get the program moving moving forward, but we are charging that fee now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions of the city manager? Any questions of the city council or the uh, city attorney? Wayne, do you have any comments? No. Nothing to add. I'll be talking to you later. Uh, just for everyone is... Uh, <laughs> Note that uh, I'm going. I will be being served at 11:30 for the for a, some sort of lawsuit. I don't know what it is yet, but I was told to be here at 11:30 so I could receive receive and sign this lawsuit. And a wonderful privilege of the mayor. <laughs> is there any old business? Any new business? Individual council members matters. I have a, an issue here. Uh, as uh, Mayor, uh, Representative Mayfield and I got together and sent a letter to the Speaker of the House of Representatives to see if he would have time to speak to us uh, relative to the sale of the power plant so that he would be up to date as to what was going, what was going on. Um, I received a letter back uh, that he will uh, meet with us in January. Uh, I sent that as the mayor, and I want to know if you, the council, want to uh, to transfer that uh, meeting to whomever the next mayor is, maintain me as the head, or send Ms. Turner, who is our real contact point. Any discussion? I personally think Ms. Uh, Turner should go. She's uh, been representing us uh, so far on this issue. I would uh, agree with that. 
I would be happy to attend. Okay. Uh, Ms. Vock, would you in the future uh, contact Ms. Turner for this? And that's all I have. I went to a couple of, of meetings. I uh, went to the Garden Club's 85th uh, anniversary. What a beautiful space they have over there. By the way, it's uh, rentable for weddings and so forth. But they were very gracious, had a wonderful reception. Uh, Ms. Tracy Carroll, any matters you have? I did want to share some updates. Um, I serve uh, at the will of the council as the representative for our city on the Treasure Coast Council of Local Governments. And as I've mentioned a number of times in the past, well, the group has been working very uh, strongly on the lagoon issue um, as a coordinated effort of all of the local governments throughout the Treasure Coast. And our meeting last month was very interesting in that we had a number of presentations from various um, professionals, uh, experts um, on the different issues that are taking place. Uh, the, one of the presentations was by Temperance Morgan, who's the director of the Everglades Policy and Coordination in the South Florida Water Management District. And she shared some information about what is happening with the Lake Okeechobee and why the releases are taking place. The lake itself can receive up to six times the capacity that it can actually let out through the Everglades. So that's why the water is, is having to go out through um, the two rivers, uh, both east and west, and at, why the original Everglades was set uh, I'm sorry, why this uh, the Lake Okeechobee was originally set up to receive such a huge capacity greater than it could ever let go to the south um, is incredible. Um, the state of Florida is working very hard on trying to uh, increase the capacity to let the water go south through the Everglades. However, as we have heard a number of times, the sugar industry is fighting that water and, and we're stuck with it coming out into our um, local estuaries. A presentation by Troy D uh, Rice, the director of the Indian River Lagoon National Estuary Program with the St. John's River Water Management District, uh, told us some inf interesting information. Um, looking at the habitat enhancement projects, they're right now um, supporting over $80 billion in construction to um, help work with um, the educational projects and the watershed throughout the lagoon. So that is exciting that that money has been designated um, for working with this. And the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission is working with um, the National Ocean Act. Oceanic and Atmospheric Association uh, to investigate the wildlife mortalities. There's been a lot of concern in the paper lately about the um, manatee deaths and uh, the animal deaths and what's happening um, throughout the lagoon. So we have got some uh, national experts um, as well as some uh, federal funding that is coming in and taking a look at the wildlife mortality. So that's another step forward. Join the um, team. Lastly, uh, Dr. Dennis um, Hanasak, a senior researcher with FAU Harbor Branch, um, has poured um, I'm sorry, has been looking at the importance of the seagrass for over um, eight years uh, here at Harbor Branch. And he is looking at the um, muck in the bottom. As we know, we've talked a lot about the water issues and w perhaps what's happening with um, sewers or septic tanks um, on the lagoon. But when nutrients and solids run off into the lagoon, they actually go to the bottom and create um, the muck. And the muck can be poisonous to the seagrasses as well, which is an interesting topic that hasn't been discussed as much lately. Um, there was a uh, some discussion about um, should muck be removed, is a certain amount of it necessary, and so they're looking at uh, the turbidity of the water that the muck creates and how that is also affecting um, the seagrasses and whether or not they can even come back. Um, and that may be one of the determining factors of the rhizomes, the root systems for the seagrasses that they found that um, have been dying off, and that's the greatest concern going forward with the seagrasses, which again create the, the livelihood in the lagoon. So um, whereas a lot of people in our community have joined hands, and we've um, said over and over that we want research to take place and we want things to happen. The research is coming together. So hopefully we can gel this together to some kind of a, a definitive path forward. Thank you. Ms. Turner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would first just like to give a great congratulations to Mr. Frank. I'm sorry if I mispronounced the name. Simorowski, Lead Operations Specialist at the airport. He's won a statewide award for operations yeah. excellence. Excellent. And I think for a small airport our size to have someone win this award, it's known as the Blue Light Award, named after the many blue taxiway lights that are so critical to airport safety, but usually go unnoticed and unappreciated. This award's given only once a year and only to one airport operations or maintenance person in the entire state. Wow. So I think we should all applaud him. 
And just a reminder that the airport master plan is there's a survey available for comment. And if you should have any comments for us in looking at planning for the airport future. Uh, I did attend the Florida Municipal Power Association meeting. Of course, the main thing of note was that there was no discussion on the FPL offer to FMPA. No discussion about Vero Beach whatsoever. Obviously, they are delaying and waiting to see what happens today with our election. So I urge everybody, please go vote. I attended the Up Close and Ecological at the Environmental Learning Center. The purpose of the program was to emphasize Indian River Lagoon ecosystems, demonstrate the interconnections between the lagoon and land, and encourage political decisions that preserve these natural resources while inspiring personal stewardship. We had a great turnout. We had about 40 people from across the county in different areas. Um, got, a, got a little wet, jumped under the lagoon, but a, a wonderful experience, and I thank the Environmental Learning Center for offering that for us. To remind everybody that Monday, November the 11th, is Veterans Day, please take this opportunity to honor our veterans. Come join us at Memorial Island at 9 o'clock for a wonderful ceremony. And it's obviously season. There's so many things going on. So quick rundown. Uh, girls' night out tomorrow at, Jet Se- at the Sun Jet Center at 6 o'clock for the Hibiscus Center. Samaritan soup bowls all over town Thursday. Go have a bowl of soup for lunch. They're always a wonderful, wonderful selection. And on Friday, there is a a multi-county forum on the lagoon from 1 to 5 at the county commission office that's open to everyone. Thank you. Mr. Kramer. Uh, I will pass. Mr. Winger. The only thing I have is uh, the Florida League of Cities has put together their uh, draft of what the energy and environment would be in ho- and thankfully it's all on the environment and all on water and just for the public I'm going to read the two points uh, the Florida League of Cities will support legislation that addresses water quality and quantity issues that affect local communities specifically the league supports efforts to revitalize and protect Florida springs aquifers surface waters and estuaries and of course we're an estuary uh, it was somewhat arduous to get the word estuary put in in the letter that the five of us signed had a material effect on the outcome. Mr. The, if I, may, I thank you so much for your efforts because I yeah, know it was, been there pushing. was so much concentration within that group to be looking at aquifers and other things, Mr. Winger. So thank you so much for raising that issue. Well, it, it wouldn't have happened without the support of the council, quite frankly. I mean, that, that was material. The second thing is the Florida League of Cities supports financial and regulatory initiatives that prior to, uh, prioritizes and encourages users to move from septic tanks to central sewer systems, especially in areas that impact rivers, again, estuaries, first magnitude springs, and impaired water bodies. So we're covered twice there. This is not the final statement, but I think it's probably pretty close to it. And we're advised that the legislature has a major focus on water issues in the state of Florida. And I think before it's all over, we're going to need state help. And I think the Florida League of Cities is, of course, we're a member of it with the other 410 cities in the the state. And I think it's, uh, it's, it's a significant lobbying effort, and hopefully... Uh, with the effort of some of our own senators and representatives, we'll get something done. Uh, so anyway, that's all I had, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Winger. Uh, I want to encourage everyone to go out and exercise your right to vote today. It's the most, the most incredible privilege that any country ever has. Uh, please go out and vote. I don't care who you vote for. Well, I do. But uh, go out and vote, please. Uh, this is my last meeting as uh, mayor. I want to thank the council for putting up with my process and procedures. Uh, But most of all, I want to thank uh, staff for keeping me out of trouble. (laughs) Uh, You don't know how much the staff does. Uh, Jim, uh, Wayne, Tammy, thank you ever so much for your help during the, the year. And is there anything else to come before the council? 
Seeing none, we are adjourned. Thank you.